I'm not a mathematician. I'm only an amateur. And the definition of amateur here is that I just love it. I did a presentation for our homeschool collective a year ago, and I have a lot of personal research material left over, and I wanted to make some of it available. I just categorized all my off-fall and put everything together in one place, so this is certainly not exhaustive, but designed to be enjoyable and spark interest and marvel at the creator. This is one of the major questions in the field of mathematics. Is math discovered or invented? This is quite a hot topic because the implications that if it is discovered, then who set math into place? This question causes even the most religiously zealous atheists to wrestle with the question and the conclusions that it points towards. There's a good introductory video about it here. You can find answers to the question from all sides, and there are articles. The author of the last article has expanded the idea into a book. Yes, this is the most fundamental, philosophical question in mathematics. You know, there used to be a time where most people believed in God, and God was the center of the universe. And so it wasn't a big stretch to, to make the reasonable conclusion that God is the one who created math, and men are kind of like, voyagers on the ocean and you know sometimes we navigate well enough to find a new land and uh, it it appears as if we discover it but actually it was always there and we just finally got around to getting to it and uh, that is one theory of mathematical progression One of the reasons the intelligent design of the universe is not attributed to chance is a math question. Statistical analysis studies have found that the Darwinian theory not only does not have sufficient time, but the chances of developing toward order and not chaos are too large to be plausible. How many is this? Most people say 10. Our math in our day and age is based upon tens. We have a 10 base program, but could you believe that this is 72? The Sumerian counting system, when you hold your hands up, is not 10, but it's more like 60. Um, each, your thumbs are used as counters. Your one hand, your left hand, is is to keep up with uh, single numbers, and your right hand is used to keep up with your tally. So you can you can use your fingers to count to twelve, and then you put your thumb down, and when you and when you get to your multiples of twelve, you stick your other fingers up. That's Sumerian counting method. And it started in Sumeria over there. Mesopotamian Basin, and we also have representational number counting where you make a shape and add to the shape, and another interesting way to count. Here's a sample of it found upon a rock. The Hebrew alphabet, the language of the Old Testament, the scripture writings in the Bible, each letter represented a numeric value and a lot of languages do this but Hebrew is one of the prominent ones that do this and within their language uh, they count their chapters in the scriptures for instance uh, with with uh, Olive Bait Gimel instead of a one two and three because that that is their number that's actually their counting system so this is a sample of that you know, if you, if you ever wondered why our clock is based upon uh, seconds and minutes, and those are a 60, a base 60 idea, and it all goes back to how a, a circle is also a base 60 idea.
it's a very clean and, and neat system a 60 60 is a really fantastic number and it, it <laughs> harmonizes with the circle Uh, decimal counting is what you learn in daily life. You can learn how to count with just zeros and ones, and that's uh, four bit binary. You know, a bit being four places, and each place has a numerical representation. 15 is the highest you can go with a uh, four bit binary. And then when you get to 16, you got to start over again. And, you know, it that that's basically how computers work is is on that part that concept of you know your basic machine languages that only use numbers and and further than that only use zeros and ones once you get to 16 you go up to the next set of bits and um what would that be the bytes and uh and you keep on you you keep your count that way Hexadecimal is interesting because it's uh, 16. It's based upon, it uses a combination of letters and numbers because there's only nine uh, values of numbers. Well, 10 if you count zero. And most mathematicians and computer people do count at 10. So there's 10 numbers in all, counting zero. And then you, you add on uh, the six letters and you get your hexadecimal. That's why a lot of your your uh, MAC addresses on your computers have letters because they use hexadecimal for those because there's more, more possibilities when you use hexadecimal than if you use the binary. One concept that I've really clinged on to, I've even applied it to Bible interpretation theory and that's fuzzy logic and fuzzy logic is a real cool thing to look into because um, when a precise yes or no answer or a precise number can't be the answer but it's got to be somewhere in between and and you know fuzzy logic has all kinds of different applications in our modern world is kind of a it's a language that really fits well for abstract ideas or um, imprecise data points so that's it for my video on math philosophy it's just some of the off fall that i had from the presentation and i really like learning about it if you have anything else to add just uh, comment or get in touch with me because i'd like to hear about it